This video is going to show you a solar mass and IFOL getting planted in rank, which the IFOL is one or nothing this week. For those who just want to see that, then skip the timestamps. Over that, I can show you what I had on, etc. So the modifiers, uh, I'll just quickly gloss over a couple. So we've got Empath, Martyr, the champions are Barrier Overload and Unstartable. It's double Vanguard, points weak. There's not many shields in this, couple of Void. There is a solar technically, but you won't be handling with it. Um, champions mob obviously uh, combat acceleration is the daily modifier this will rotate in and out with other mods and then we've got acute solar burn so we've got to count for that in itself this run's going to be on a warlock you can do it on any class but I'm just I happen to be on a warlock so I'm leveling it as of today so on well of radiance and power and rift celestial fire fusion grenades Icarus dash touch of flame heat rise has got buff today you maybe want to try it out I haven't tried it out yet but it sounds interesting Fragments are Ember of Wonder, Ember of Torches, Solace, Ashes. Pairing that with the Exotic Chestplate, the Starfire Protocol, Fusion Grenade Setup. Weapons are Osteo, the Exotic SMG, a Barrier Pulse, Last Perdition, which is Void because there's a couple of Void Shields. And we're using a Sword, Volon Guillotine. I highly recommend though you use a Solar Sword. If you are going to use Osteo, obviously you can't use Lament. Lament's a good option in this as well. It isn't a bad option using Lament if you want to go that route because you get the acute Solar Burn. But if you are using this help, I highly recommend don't go Fallen Guillotine. I made a mistake and forgot. There is a vo there is a solar variant of Fallen Guillotine called Eternity's Edge. Very good sword. This is something I could use, right? Uh, or you could use. And there's a couple of solar swords. It's up to yourself what you want to do with that. But a sword's handy in this. I'll explain the run. Armor mods are Armor Finders on the Helmet, Well of Ordnance, Barrier Pulse Rifle, Overload SMG, Bountiful Wells, Double Solar Void Resist Seasonal Mod Plate, uh, Resistance Plate Mod, Font of Wisdom, Elemental Ordnance, Scavenger, obviously on the boots, uh, Revitalize and Blast and Classy Restoration. Classy Restoration <coughs> pardon me, is uh, an absolute top tier mod. You always want to have it on pretty much all the time when you're using a Solar 3.0. But this is the second mod that you want to be doing when you're soloing GMs. Or high level nightfalls. This is a top tier perk and it's gonna help you with champions so much. So I highly recommend this perk. It's very good. Uh, and basically that was the setup I used on the Warlock. So we've worn and nothing back in the rotation of nightfalls, that means it's obviously gonna be a GM as well, which uh, in my opinion is a, a good thing, and I'll explain why when there's less stuff going on in the run, I suppose. But as for now, we're just going to start with the uh, starting section. There's an overload, a couple of um, Vex at this beginning, but we're just going to lead out with an Empowering Rift, because obviously that's going to uh, proc Classy Restoration and our Fusion Nades. We're going to use our Fusion Nades as much as possible and farm up our next couple of Fusion Nades. Just keep an eye mainly in this run on my Fusion Nade ability um, recharge rate when we're standing in rifts and stuff. But the main thing is I've got a rift back because you want an empowering rift um, to deal with this overload. Obviously, I'm quite high in power, um, close to the 1590 mark. If you're below 1580, then this run will be a bit more difficult. But I would say if you're 10 levels under, you're fine to solo this. Because of our resilience is now, so as long as you're specking for resilience nowadays, you can do stuff under level. Right? Um, Knife falls have been nerfed indirectly because of resilient stat itself. And that will be the same that will be true for GMs. Grandmasters will be the most consistent that they've ever been this season in terms of not dying to stuff. Because the resilient stat is finally reworked that has took, by the way, since 2017 to fix. Which I can't believe it's took this long. But it's here, so let's not complain too much. It's very good. And as, as you can see now, things are going to be more consistent with the game. Apart from physics, there's still an issue with physics in the game. It's a little buggy uh, with, with stuff, especially duality dungeon. Mainly with backpacks and, and phalanxes, it can be. And obviously this Nightfall's got that stuff in it, but uh, obviously there's no mechanics like there is in that dungeon itself. So I'll just explain, obviously, you know, tips, add spawns, stuff like that with this particular nightfall. Now, obviously, you can skip these ads that you see here, but if you want to go for platinum, there is a champion up above. 
And if you want to take out that champion, I recommend that you take out everything surrounding the champ because you need to isolate that champion away from everything else. Now I'm shooting that Hydra be, uh, behind his shield because I've got Barrier Pulse on. Whenever, whatever Barrier mod is up for any season, it will penetrate shields and it will penetrate goblins regen. Not, not, not Barrier Goblins. Well, it will obviously, but I'm on about the other goblins that are, are immune, right? But what we're doing with this uh, unstoppable is we're going to have an empowering rift to help us take the unstoppable with mainly fusion grenades right uh, and we're going to use a bit of sword on them and that's how we're going to deal with unstoppables uh it's not completely safe sword and an, un an un a unstoppable that isn't stopped but if you've got a well of radiance it is now i'm high enough in power to sort of go and do that but if you aren't Focus more on using your osteo and uh, manipulating these unstoppables. They're very easy to mani manipulate around a box, a corner, all sorts of stuff. Because they'll do their, within two meters, they'll do their bash attack. Right? Or their shield, uh, not their shield bash, but their, whatever they knock you back with, their knockback attack. Well, when they do that, you can strafe around, a, around the corner of a box, box or something like you just saw me doing. Right, and then you can let the champ diagro and aggro. So you need to know how to do that, right? You know, there's different loadouts that you can use for ward, and it's very—it's not flexible, but there's different ways of going about what you want to do. Now, overload solar grenades up. It's molten overload called. That's what the name of it. It is bugged. It does work and doesn't work. That's why I haven't went that route. As what I could have done is went the overload solar grenade, then I could go you know my barrier unstoppable primary wise and then choose a good heavy didn't go that route because overloads are hard work as it is we're just going to make it harder work if we don't have something good on for overloads and obviously osteo is going to do that so here's what i generally do with the unstoppables and it works out really good you you well irradiance them because of the resistance well provides now you can survive against them they'll just keep knocking you back here and there if a train hits them it will kill them so if that happens, it's a bonus for you. As long as you've done damage to them, you will get the score rating off them, if you like. But mainly I'm focusing on doing damage in my well and letting the fusionades, because fusionades do so much damage against anything in the game. Like, let's not forget, Unstoppables have a huge amount of health when they're not stopped. So just that just goes to show how much the fusionades are doing to the Unstoppable without me even stopping them. And osteo is good on them as well because it's damage over time, right? Um, so I'm going to do an empowering rift at this pillar. This is the perfect amount of range you want to fight from to deal with this ensemble because obviously we've got a pulse on, right? And he won't blind us. You can see I can strafe and, and avoid that. So you can see the revitalize and blast helping us. So even though I'm only shooting him with a primary, when I'm getting that shield stun, it's doing that massive explosion. This perk's going to be hugely useful on GMs, and I'm telling you right now, people are going to be running this perk. The players that know what they're doing with Nightfalls and stuff, and dealing with champs, they're going to know how powerful it is and run it. And you can run it with Classy Restoration, because class, as you saw before, Classy Restoration is 6, this is 4. Downside is you can't run a Resilient Spec, re Recovery Spec, etc. Et but you, you'll have to just spec better on your other pieces, you know. Um, but it's, it's highly useful this mod we've had these types of mods in the past just people sort of have a short memory with them because they're around for a season and they go away you don't see them again and then they come back with a different name and but i already know how good these are these types of mods because you can basically kill a champion with your primary and that is so effective because it saves on heavy for something else now this particular nightfall has famine on you can negate farming with the right scavengers and mods, you're good to go with that. So this week's master is easy, last week's master was easy because chaff was on. The week after, uh, next week will be togetherness or attrition. That will be a bit more challenging, but again it won't be too bad, right? Because um, there's a lot of ways of getting HP now, like you regen back. <clears throat> so what I done there is I took out the Hydra from the stairs before I pushed up. The reason for that is because if you, once you push up, the adds spawn in. Then they start to attack you, right? But this that makes the whole thing easier because the Hydra's down. 
you can then f put a weld arm and focus on the two barriers because that is your goal. If you leave the barriers up and start ag clear, they're going to snipe you and if you're not straight from right and you're getting hit, solar burns on so these snipers are doing more damage to you. On Master, yes, it's not it's not too much of a problem, but I'm just showing you how you properly play it because when you do the Grandmaster difficulty, you're going to want to play it like this. This is how you take the ads out in this sequence. You do this first and then that. You manipulate the ad spawn, stuff like that. Because knowing the, not knowing this stuff now isn't going to penalise you, but not knowing this stuff later on when you're trying to get your Gilded Conqueror is going to penalise you because you'll have spawned in all the ads, you're going to upset your team, or you're not going to do your solo, or whatever it might be. So these little extra things add up. All the small details add up. And it's more so on a solo. So now we're going to push up a little bit. Make sure the train doesn't, like, just make sure that if, you know, you're going past when the train's up there, obviously it's going to be a wipe. There is a checkpoint-based system in Nightfalls, but you're going to lose, you know, you're going to lose time, right? It's not too difficult, you know, uh, time-wise for the master. But, you know, just don't let the train kill you, is what I'm trying to say. The... Major will spawn in, or the Ultra Vex will spawn in after a bit, after a percentage of ads are cleared. Right now, notice that Void Minotaur pushed me before. I was aware of that. If there's two Void uh, Minotaurs up, one will actually push you, which he did. Uh, I just sorted him. Uh, with Empath being on, they do increase melee, and he can catch you off guard. So I just use my sword. Since I'm not using my sword for much, anyways. The primary and the revitalizing burst and the starfire is doing most of the work. The swords just to assist on unstoppables, really. It, you know, because the unstoppables are the niggle and point. So to help out, assist with that, the sword's good. So on this section, you're going to have two unstoppables total. So make sure that you've got a well for that. It's all about timing your wells and when you use them. Now let's look at this uh, location here. This is actually new. They've opened up this area. I don't know why that's open. And it also showed on the radar that there was an ad there. If you were keen-eyed, you would have saw that. I don't know what's going on with that. It'd be nice if there was some sort of secret with this nightfall, but I don't think there is. Because that section was never open before, so that's weird. That is very... It's a weird thing, but... I highly doubt they're going to start doing that. If you didn't know in D1, they used to do, they used to hide secrets in Nightfalls. An amazing thing that they used to do, it was with Taken King. Uh, they would hide the Book of Sorrows in, I think it was the Book of Sorrows thing. No, it wasn't the Book of Sorrows, it was um, frag some fragments you had to pick up. So, and obviously I had the Whisper mission that was hidden in, in, a, in a, oh no, it was hidden in a daily mission, my bad. But this is how you can see how the wells basically took out two unstoppables just about. It's about to run out. Make sure that you keep an eye on that. But we've got a, an empowering rift uh, next. And we have got classic restoration for 10 seconds. So we can push the unstoppable for a bit. And it's literally finishable, which is that's the goal. So one well, one empowering has took out the two unstoppables. So we're fine. If you're lowering power, you're going to do less damage, so you might need to push back a little bit, right? And then you can manipulate the unstoppable right at the back of the map. Like where the teleporter is, you can go all the way back there. The unstoppable won't push you the full way, he will get to the doorway and push back. I know that just from experience, so you can even go as far back as that and then just use Osteo to take down the unstoppable. You're not timed, there's only one section where with one of the unstoppables you have to be on, on your point with him um, but other than that you can take things at your leisure I could actually skip some of these ads I could have done that just popped my rift and ran past them I didn't think of doing that to be honest I was just um, clearing the ads I suppose this is actually one of my favorite knife falls in the game yeah, I think it is for D2 I'm not saying it's my favorite uh, nightfall of all time, but it's my favorite D D2 uh, nightfall. The ma mainly because it's got good pace and the boss is good. Um, it's D1 Prisoner of Elders. 
and all three champions are in this and it was a very good scored knife for be pre sh um before shadow keep pre shadow keep it was it was very good that's when we used to do the proper scored knife falls they don't do them anymore not really well we did we had guardian games but that wasn't that wasn't scoring properly either because that was all just with silly mods and stuff so one and nothing is definitely my favorite strike in this game just because the pacing of it um it's very good for score and it's good for ch champs because it's all free it makes you think a little bit better however some seasons it's worse than others it depends like if we had disrupt and blade for swords we're halfway there then we can run you know a double primary barrier pulse you know uh, a, a barrier and an unstoppable scout whatever and then a disrupt and blade and then put Ariana's vow in that you can do things you know um and it's the only it's only nightfall in the game that actually has that so for this point here obviously you're not timed you're not timed until the capture points come the, my thought process is with this take down all the mines so I, what i'm saying that is run past all the mines because those mines will get in your way later on so you're prepping this area because when you do get to the next section you you can't mess about like look just taking out all the mines because I might decide to come over here although I might not so I'm just taking them anyways and also shoot all the exploding barrels those right because um, there's a chance that they could kill you it's less likely now because of how resilience works but they get in your way now what I'm gonna do is focus the two barriers I'll use a nade here as well pick a piece of cover around the map Anywhere you like, but obviously not where the Overlord and the Insoppable are, because the Overlord and the Insoppable are going to chase each other all day long if you let them, which is ideal, so we'll let them do that. The barriers, however, will just hang around this area, so we can take them. Just make sure, though, that the Overlord doesn't catch your eye, uh, catch, catch you, because he can start to maybe chase you instead, but if you play behind cover enough, then those two will just chase each other while you deal with this uh, barrier. So we we'll use um, our abilities there, just melt them. Now what I suggest that you do is take out the Overlord. Now you want to try to take out the Overlord without the Unstoppable seeing you. As soon as the Overlord uh, pushes up on you, maybe spam him with Sword if you must. Because um, now, if you notice the AI, he's now tr uh, triggered on us. Osteo is obviously going to do a good job for us. And that unstoppable is too close. So I don't want that. So I'm just going to keep using Osteo and play from a distance. Now the unstoppable's is aggroed on us and will be for the entire thing. But the key thing is, is leave the unstoppable to last because there's no rush with him. Uh, and also you can be in position because it's critical that you clear two champions and a couple of adds in, say, 40 seconds. 40 to 50 seconds you need to clear the unstoppable and bear in mind obviously you haven't got unstoppable so things take a little longer see and also you need a well don't start this like don't kill this unstoppable until you have a well of radiance if you don't you probably will die and not do what you need to do so this is where the barrier vex champ spawns in capture point a will come up but you've got 60 seconds or whatever to capture that it starts with 60 or 50 one of the two uh, but we'll, we'll start with an empowering rift because that will give us classy restoration. Then we'll go back into our rift and we'll use a bit of solar nade uh, and then just finish with the sword. Then we want the unstoppable to push us. I don't know what happened right there. Generally he does. I think he went round the other side. He's here now. That's good. So you want to push the unstoppable as quickly as possible. Now, ideally in this little corridor, the later you leave it, the worse it is because you might have the phalanxes. Uh, if you do it out there, the phalanxes are going to come in and try and shield bash you. You don't want that. So mainly we're just focusing our sword, right, and our fusion. He's finishable, so we'll do that. And that's a well of radiance, um, well spent. Clear some adds at B if you want, because that's capture point B. We've got 10 seconds for A, but the timer will stop when you step on. It, so you ain't going to keep going down while you capture it. The timer will have stopped. So doing this little optimization helps you kill all the champions that you need to. That will then now you actually are going to be timed where you, you you can't mess around. So you got B and C. I recommend going C first because C is the harder plate. 
because um, you're gonna have a Vex Avoid, Void Shield, and there'll be an Overload, but the Overload won't, nine times out of ten, he won't be on capture point C, he'll be near B. The thing is, I have tested this, and I've tested this previous seasons, you don't need to clear this particular Overload, and you will still get plat, because a lot of Nightfalls, you can skip a champ, and you still get plat. Some of them are one, some of them are two, right? Um, so you don't need to clear this overload, but this is my first run of Master. So I was actually wanting to maybe just clear him because I was worried I wouldn't get plat. But I actually don't end up clearing him anyways. Right, I say I've got 20 seconds, but I'm a little slow getting the damage out on the overload. So I just go back anyways. I'm kind of glad though because now you know you don't need to do what I've just done. Just capture B, the overload will despawn and disappear and you will still definitely get plat. That's guaranteed, because you'll see at the very end, it will say Platinum Rewards. However, the loot doesn't show that it's Platinum Rewards, right? Because the, there wasn't much loot, but it, it does state at the bottom left when you complete Platinum Rewards. When it states that, it's Platinum. It's end of discussion. Whether the loot's bad or not, sometimes it is. It just depends. Now we're going to pick up the Scorch Cannon. Funnily enough, it's called a Scorch Cannon. Huh. Before actually Scorch came out. On, on, on Soul 3.0 but we'll pick it up and this does massive damage to him and if you didn't see there I done nearly a third HP with one well third HP with one nade one uh, shot of the cannon because it's being buffed by acute solar burn so this will be strats for GM as well because picking up the scorch cannon you have 10 shots now if you fully charge it, it'll do max damage to him but you need to let it tick twice let it have max charge and then you do like what 50k 55k damage and this is where i can stand ignore all the ads because once you clear this um ultra the ads will despawn they will need you and stuff so just be careful of that but you can just stand where i stood just use the scorch cannon you can definitely kill him in the with less than 10 shots and you can save ammo that way or you could just use osteo but you've got to be a bit close to him when you're using osteo and i don't want to use the pulse and I want to save a bit of nade energy um, for what we're coming up to now. As we've got four champions to take out before the boss fight. Now, I've bugged out the Nightfall. What you need to do is you need to let the Warden AI's dialogue finish before you could even come into this room. You need to stay where the capture point A was and don't bug it out. I've bugged out the Nightfall. When I was running this, I sort of remembered that this was a thing. Because I haven't ran Warden in, it's got to be four or five months, whatever it's been now. So I forgot that this this is still a bug from five, six months ago. We're still, we're, we're, not, we're not going forward. We're just frozen in time and we've still got the same bugs. So the, I suppose it's, I'm kind of glad it's happening as well because you can see what you need to do uh, to correct it. So if the music doesn't play correctly and Drifter doesn't do his dialogue, you know you've bugged it. There's no champions, no boss. You will never get anything to spawn in. If this is a Grandmaster and it's a solo, you've ruined your run. You need to start over again. So it's a pain. So make sure, I'll repeat again, that you make sure that the Warden AI's dialogue is finished before you even come near the route, like before you even go in the building. You need to stay outside until the full dialogue finishes. Then you start to come down slowly. You let all dialogue finish until you claim the chest. That's the fix. And if if it's on master, then and it happens, and you just wipe, let the dialogue finish, then claim the chest. And then the champions will spawn in, the boss will spawn in, and you're happy. It's kind of dumb, but it is what it is. Don't rush the game. It doesn't. It doesn't want you going fast. So that's why I've wiped, if, you, if you're sort of confused or miffed about it. That's what's happened. So now we've got the champions to spawn in. There's going to be two barriers, one Vex, one Cabal. An unstoppable and an overload. So <clears throat> ideally what you want to do is take out the unstoppable first, but it's hard because um, you can't really get the good damage in. So what's going to happen... Because we haven't got, like, um, as I said, a ranged, unstoppable weapon on. So we can't do, you know, it's going to take forever, really. So what I ended up deciding to do, because it is only master, is uh, take out the Overlord. 
Because using Osteo from here, you're going to find it a little inconsistent. This is where it's... Don't forget, it is only an SMG, right? It's not meant to be an auto rifle. It does work and perform as it should. That's why it's a good weapon. But you're not going to be able to stun this overload consistently from here. You may well get a stun or two, but you won't be able to keep that consistent proc of overload up. So you're going you're gonna to have to come down. So we're going to focus, try and melt that overload as quickly as possible. Luckily, the Cabal barrier is absolutely melting that overload, helping us, assisting us. As long as the Cabal uh, barrier doesn't see us, it'll assist your damage. This is the dangerous part, I suppose, but you need to be a master of de aggro and aggro in the champ. So you saw, you got pretty close, and I, I sort of hid behind this piece of cover here. And then if you leave it a second or two, eventually he starts backing up and starts to fight the barrier, the Vex. Leave the Vex barrier up. If you don't do that, you are then faced with a barrier cabal and a barrier unstoppable. And that's a nightmare because you might even have to pop a well. And uh, I could have done, I suppose, but I wanted to save well for damage. So at the very least, I sort of could have let the unstoppable push, use the well of radiance if you wanted to. So you could do that because you don't need it for damage. I just wanted to use it for damage. But he's weak enough there now. So I'm just going to do a bit of osteo damage and then cover and then osteo damage. He's finishable, but it's too dangerous to get the finisher because the Cabal... Barrier absolutely melts. Don't let that barrier see you for a second. So now this is the next location to take out the Cabal. Take the Cabal out one out first, not the Vex. The Vex is the easier one to take. You need to be in the right position, because this is going to be a mini boss exploit, which was also a thing six months ago. So it's still in the game, but I'm not complaining too much about it. Part of me feels they like to they like to leave some of these exploits in. I I'm convinced that there's a couple of exploits they like to leave in, but sometimes they do patch them out. Like uh, Proven Grounds was patched out super quick. Week two they patched it straight away. You could climb on the roof. Patch it week two. We've had Lake of Shadows that's had an exploit in it for years. We've had this one that's had an exploit in it for years. They don't touch them. It's weird, but I'm not complaining. I'm gonna I'm gonna use it and show you people. So this is where you uh, stand. You need to jump up and, and, and hit the third pillar. Stand close to the third. So there's like girders, right? So it's the third one along. You need to know that because if it's the second one that you jump on, you just fall down. It's an invisible wall or an invisible ledge that I'm standing on. The first one, girder, it's not. It's the third one. Now you do damage from here. The boss will go through his phase. He's trying not to jump up around too much. You may fall off. Once you're here, you need to sort of imagine that you, you can't move too much. Don't use rockets here, you will die. It's a bad choice, especially like galley or something. Super bad, you may die. You need to sort of jump shot it. Um, you can use your Empower and Rift like so. Like This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my Empower and Rift, do osteo tick damage, and keep fusion in. It does some huge damage because solar acute solar burns on. Right, so it's doing... Like, he's below half HP. I haven't even touched him. So, it's very good. We'll use our well in a minute. I like to use my well when he actually pushes. But that, by the time he pushes, he's dead. So, but you can well here. You won't fall down. Right? Just like you can rift. But as I said, you can't move too much. You need to stay close, stick to that third girder or whatever you call it. Stick to where I am and, and you won't have any problems. Once the boss goes through his animations, his solar animations, he'll come back over to you. Make sure you aggro him by shooting your gun. Right? We'll pop a well and then just finish him off. Just, if, as I said, you can skip that overload I was on about. You'll see platinum rewards appear in a second. But that was a solar master getting platinum rank on a warlock. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Note, 